welcome to the morning session so yesterday um, we were continuing this discussion about the self and the body and how when we are not aware of the self or when we are assuming that we are the body how there can be this confusion about what is required for the body and what is required for the self because we don't have that clarity of the needs of the two separately very often we mix up the needs of the two and therefore the fulfillment of the needs is also mixed up and we are not able to be fulfilled within so we went through this uh, this is an important slide because it is bringing about or it is you know maybe pointing to becoming aware of this that we often consume confuse ourselves to be the body so while my needs the needs of the self are continuous the needs of the body are limited but when i think i am the body then my continuous need i am trying to fulfill through the body so even though i have a continuous need for feelings when i am trying to fulfill them through the body i am looking at everything that is being used by the body so i am focusing on physical things like food like clothes like shelter like you know to protect the body but then i am not having that clarity that my need is separate from the need of the body because i have this continuous need for happiness and because i don't have that happiness within me i keep trying to get it through all these various means outside i think of myself as the body and i think of getting all this either the happiness through the sensation through the body so like with tasty food good music and so on visiting places seeing different things or i try to get it through you know trying to get the good feeling from others so in that process i feel helpless and dependent on the outside world i feel dependent on other human beings and on the moods of other human beings and on this physical facility outside so i keep trying to accumulate more and more physical facility in the hope that this will lead to my happiness and i have many expectations from the outside which may or may not be real real in the sense they may not be um in line with what is possible or what is likely to happen the outcome if i am very focused largely on the outcome then i tend to be unhappy while working for the outcome because i am tense i am anxious and i need and i am trying to make sure that whatever i planned happens the way i planned it outside but very often i may notice that whatever i plan and what happens outside may not be so matching because even when i go to do the things that i want to do you know when i have the thoughts of doing them when i actually physically go to do the body has some limitations so i may think that i will be able to finish so many so many chores 
in the course of the day. And I make all kinds of plans within me that I will do this, I will do that, I will do that. And then at the end of the day, when I am not able to accomplish everything, I am disturbed. Even while going through the day, this constant burden seems to be there on me that I want to try to finish what I started and I want to complete it in the way that I thought I should. But then if it doesn't happen, which may often be the case, then I am very disturbed, I am unhappy. So we notice that throughout life we may be doing this, that we are sort of postponing our happiness and thinking that when we finish such and such thing, then we will be happy. But when we get there, when we finish that, then we're thinking of 10 other things that we needed to do. So again, we have that satisfaction or happiness or uh, whatever we feel about completing the task is very momentary. And again, that same cycle starts of the anxiety, the tension and so on till we get to the next whatever milestone we may have set for ourselves. And this continues throughout life. But if we see what we really want is to be happy, is there another path to that? And there certainly is. So when we have that clarity that I am the self, my needs are fulfilled from within me, Nothing from outside can really fulfill my need. Then I can work on myself to try to fulfill this need that is within me. Of course, when it comes to the body, there are many needs of some needs of the body also. And when I have this clarity about physical facility being useful for the body, being required by the body, then I go about acquiring the physical facility that is needed for the body. I don't try to get my feelings fulfilled through the body because there then there is a problem. So we were asking this question yesterday to reflect on that throughout the day when we are doing various activities, where is our focus? Is it that we are constantly looking for the outcome, the expectation of this, that when the outcome is matching with what I had imagined it, then I will be happy? Or are we focused on being happy and then doing whatever we need to do? Yeah. So if we see, you know, certainly in work outside also needs to be done and that is important, right? Yes. But I don't have to link my happiness with that. See? It's not that yeah, yeah. if we are happy, then we, we won't do the work. We can be yeah. at peace, we can be comfortable within and then do the work without all that tension and anxiety and all of that, isn't it? If, I mean, that possibility, if it was there, certainly it would be more desirable, isn't it? Whenever we go for a meeting, uh, we'll have a mindset that not to share anything. Because if you share certain things, uh, again, the, uh, the things comes, it means negativity only comes. So that is why most of the people keep quiet and whatever they will say, they will do it. This is what, the, uh, in this way, we are not growing as a profession, uh, as a, my uh, capability will not grow. So that is what I am thinking. Yeah, capability will not grow. And more importantly, even though I may not be talking about it, what am I actually doing? I am avoiding the discussion with them. I'm avoiding bringing up the points, but within me, what am I feeling? I'm disturbed, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. 
So the thing is, our competence is lacking in this case, isn't it? Yeah. Their competence is also lacking, but our competence is also lacking. We are not able to discuss without getting that feeling of opposition within us. See, what happens is, um, many a times we may not realize that our sanskars are driving us, our assumptions, whatever we have, um, whatever our notions are about things, that drives us, our perspective. And we may not be aware of this. So right. even for the person who is finding all this negativity or finding ways of how we cannot do it, it may be a very strong sanskar in that person. And that person may not even be aware of it. But, right. but what happens is, we see it as the other person sort of cutting what I am saying, isn't it? We see yeah, it yeah. as somebody opposed to what I am saying. Yes. And with that feeling, yeah. I have also a feeling of opposition for them. Yes. And in that process, I am very unhappy. But if I yeah, could yeah. see that, you know, their intention is not to hurt me, their intention is not to make me unhappy. It's just that is their sanskar driving them. It's lack of understanding. Yes. So their competence is low. So just like what yeah. yesterday we were talking, if I can see that the intention is pure like mine, and it's yes. only a problem of the competence, yes. then I can try to, you know, have build that competence in them. But for that, I need to also have the competence to be able to do that, isn't it? So the yes, first sir. step in that direction is trust on intention. So if I yes. have trust on their intention, at least I am comfortable with them. If I am comfortable with them, now yes. with that comfort within, when I go to talk to that person, there is no feeling of opposition. There is feeling of relationship. Yes. And with that feeling of relationship, when I discuss things, I am open to their suggestions. And initially, because of their deep sanskar, they may not be able to see my point, but I persist with a feeling of relationship. I don't nag, I don't like force my point, but I can have an open discussion with that feeling of relationship and you will find that changes, slowly changes the outlook of the other person also. But we can try it and see for ourselves and validate it for ourselves. Yes, yes sir. Sir. if I have a feeling of opposition and I go to discuss, it's going to become an argument, it's going to be ugly, and I'm going to feel worse. So I'm avoiding that situation outside, which is, you know, okay to avoid the situation as of now immediately, because it would have become worse. But the important thing is, within me, I'm still not happy, which was the main yeah, point. So yes, I need to work on my happiness also. Isn't it? Yes. So That's when right. I do that, when I can have the right feeling within me, then that possibility may be there yeah. of trying to do things on the outside also. Otherwise, then I am, you know, otherwise I am doomed to this unhappiness every now and then. And that, you know, you don't even have to wait till you talk to that person. The moment you think about it, you are having that feeling within and yeah, you are yeah. unhappy. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes. So if we see this, you know, interaction that is happening between the self and the body, we said that the self and the body, as a human being, we are a coexistence of the two. And there is some transaction of information that happens between the self and the body. This transaction that happens between the self and the body this is only a transaction of information. So you can consider this proposal that nothing material is being exchanged between the self and the body. What is happening is there are some sensations in the body. So I am reading those sensations and I am processing that information within myself, I'm coming to some conclusion about it. 
and then accordingly i am giving instructions to the body so for every transaction that is happening i am the one who's deciding what to do i am deciding what sensation to read from the body and i am deciding what instruction to send to the body or is it happening on its own like for instance right now we are connected on this zoom uh, and we are discussing things we are talking to one another now when i am speaking you are able to hear my voice but you may also be hearing so many other sounds like birds chirping in the background or a car going past or a dog barking in the street or some other sound now what are we paying attention to you'll find that we focus on the words that are being spoken we are paying attention to that sound but many other sounds are also reaching our ears isn't it but we are paying attention to that sound you will notice this even when you take pictures in cameras like in the phone camera or something you know even though the phone camera is so good uh you know the best uh, there may be so many newer and newer versions of phones coming out with better and better cameras and somehow your experience of what you see and what you see in that picture that you take is not quite the same i'll give an example like for instance there is a beautiful sunrise and you see the sunrise now many there are many images uh, you know outside there is there are many other things there may be trees there may be birds there may be animals there may be you know it may be a nice park or whatever but if my focus is on that sunrise then even though all these uh things are being reflected in my eyes i am paying attention largely to that sunrise but when i capture it on the camera now the camera takes a picture of everything now it looks little bit different has anybody noticed this you can answer in the chat yes or no does it happen with others yes yes nice so why is that happening because we are paying attention to whatever we think is important at that time for us so that difference is there you'll notice that so i am deciding to read a particular sensation from the body there may be many sensations but i choose what to read and i decide what instruction to give to the body so as the consciousness i am there the body is also there as the consciousness i want to live that wanting to live is within me body doesn't have this will to live for the body that is not there but i am using the body like an instrument for myself and i don't just want to live i want to live with continuous happiness i don't want to be unhappy even for one moment that is my need isn't it as far as the body is concerned certainly physical facility is required for the body and it is required for what that clarity should be there with me so it is required for nurturing the body protecting the body and to rightly utilize the body how am i utilizing the body am i using it as a means to get happiness 
or am I using it for my purpose and my goal or my purpose is to understand or to realize the self and this entire existence. So for that purpose, am I using the body or am I using the body to try to get happiness through it? That clarity can come if I can see the two separately and I can see that my need is separate from the need of the body. So my need of living with continuous happiness, it is possible if I work on this program of trying to understand the harmony at all the levels from myself to the family, to the society, to nature and all of existence. So if I can understand this harmony and I can live in that harmony, then that possibility of continuity of happiness is there. And with that, I take care of the body. I have this sense of responsibility towards the body. <coughs> It is a very useful instrument for me for the purpose you know, of trying to understand and live in harmony. So I take care of the body with a feeling of responsibility, with that feeling of self-regulation. And I use the body to produce this physical facility to produce, to protect and rightly utilize whatever physical facility is produced. So if you see where the body is concerned, that is only, this is only a small fraction of my program, less than one fourth. Why less than one fourth? Because if you see my program is to live in harmony at all the levels, from the self to entire existence. Right. But as a human being, so this is four levels, isn't it? Self, family, society, and nature and existence. So four levels I want to understand and live in harmony. That's my program. Now out of this, if we see the human being is only one out of four. And in the human being also, the self is the one you know, that is driving the body or taking the decision for the body. So the body is less, certainly less than one fourth. So that's how, you know, we can say that it, this is only a small fraction of my program. Ultimately, we need to be able to see that I am the seer. I am the one who is seeing. I am the doer. I am the person who is doing things and I am the enjoyer. Enjoyer meaning I am the one who is experiencing everything. The body is something that I am using only as a tool or an instrument for whatever I want to do. But I should have the clarity of what I need to do because ultimately I am the one driving the body, isn't it? So I am the seer means the one who is seeing. That means the one who is understanding. So like this example that you see on the screen. So if you are given something in your hand and you conclude that this is a pen, is it just the eyes that are concluding this? No. The image is being formed. And the image is being formed on the retina upside down, isn't it? But we bring about this, we come to this conclusion that yes, this is a pen. And if you see, you only see the, the side of the pen that is facing your eyes. You see only that part. What is behind that you conclude, isn't it? So many things we are concluding in that process. We are deciding. We are coming to 
this conclusion that this is what this is. So ultimately, even if you are seeing with the eyes, that only that reflection is falling in the eyes, all the rest of that you are deducing and deciding what this is, isn't it? So like that, you can see that all the five senses are just instruments that the self is using to get some idea of the outside. So to interact with the outside world, we are using these five sense organs to try to get information of the outside. So just like you see outside, you can also see inside you without using the body for the sensation. The sense organs are very useful. The sense organs of the body are very useful to get information about the outside world. But when I need to pay attention within me, then I don't need to see with the eyes. Now this instrument is not required for me at that time when I'm seeing within. Like, for instance, we can notice this. We have been doing these um, uh, assignments that notice that when you're feeling happy, when you're getting angry, we can notice all this. And for that, are we using the eyes? No, we are not using the eyes. So the self is seeing or understanding as required, sometimes with the help of the body, sometimes without the help of the body. But a lot of times, if we don't see the significance, we may be focusing on the outside. So we are using the body for all our needs, but to be able to see that for seeing within, I don't need to use the body. I can directly see within. And whenever I need to see outside, I can use, make use of the body like I'm making use of any other instrument. Like when I need to write, I use the pen. But I don't hold on to the pen all the time. Only when I need to write, I pick up the pen and write it. So similarly, when I need interaction with the outside world, when I need to find out things, get information and all that, I use the body as an instrument. But whenever I need to pay attention inside, I don't need to use the body. Then we said, I am the doer. Doer means the one that does, who decides, who takes the decision to do. So I am the, the one who is deciding. I am deciding what to do what not to do, when to do, all of that I am deciding. I may or may not use the body to do. What I think of is my decision. I do that thinking within myself. Now there is no role of the body. So whatever decision I am making, that I am doing within myself without the use of the body. So again, when you're thinking about things, when you're coming to some decision, for that you don't need to, at that moment, you don't need to take care, I mean, uh, read the sensation from the body. You don't need the help of the body at that moment. There is no role of the body in that. So when I'm thinking, I'm imagining, Right? I'm deciding, I'm feeling something. There is no role of the body. But after I decide something, now when I want to express this decision to somebody else, then I have to use the body to express. So now you can see that when you are getting angry within, that reaction is already happening within me. It's just that I'm not using the body right now. But if I decide to express it outside, then I use the body and I get angry outside also. I show my anger. Isn't it? So I'm using the body just like an instrument. Ultimately, I am the enjoyer. 
or the experiencer. Enjoyer means the one who is experiencing this happiness or unhappiness. The body is just doing whatever I am asking it to do. Is the body feeling happy or unhappy? No, I am feeling happy or unhappy. That is why even before I expressed through the body, I didn't even use the body. But within only, I was getting disturbed, I was getting angry, I was getting unhappy. And that is important to me because I am the one who is experiencing all this. And I don't want to experience the unhappiness. I want to be happy every moment. So you notice this, that I am the one who feels enthusiastic about things. I am the one who feels depressed. I am the one that feels angry or delighted. And I give some instruction to the body. So you will notice that when you are angry, you walk a certain way, you hold the body in a certain way. If you are depressed, you may be walking a different way. Your shoulders may be drooping. See, all of those things, they seem to be happening automatically. But are they happening automatically? Or am I deciding? And then, uh, you know, I'm noticing it perhaps in the body sometimes. So ultimately, I am the enjoyer. I am the experiencer of this. So in all of this, what comes out is that the self is the one that is central to my existence as a human being. The body is just an instrument that I am using. So ultimately, as a human being, I am a coexistence of these two distinct entities, the self and the body. While the self is the consciousness, the body is material. And if we see all of this, we may be able to notice that it is me, the self, that is the one that is central to my existence as a human being or my experience, or whatever is important to me. And for that, as a tool, I use the body. So we'll stop here for now. And I think this is um, something that we can all reflect on. We can try to see that, are we able to see this? That the self is the one that is central for me. The body is my tool. And so in my daily activities, where is my focus? Is my focus on the body or is my focus on the self? If we can just try to do this uh, reflection today, uh, we can have your observations tomorrow. So we'll stop here.